Thank you for joining us and welcome to another episode, an exciting episode, I must say, of Satu's Arbuleleng Fridays. Now, you would remember and you would recall from our previous episodes that Satu has made it very, very clear that when it comes to the national general elections of 2024, we have put our name right up there and we are saying as a South African Democratic Teachers Union, we support the African National Congress to secure a decisive victory. Now, in today's exciting episode, which I am certain it would be, we are joined by the Secretary General of the South African Students' Congress, Sasko. And his name is Comrade Alungi Lekamche. Uh, thank you, Comrade Nopala, for joining us. Thank you for making the time to join us and talk to the teachers. My name is Alungi Lekamche, the Secretary General of SASCO of the 22nd National Executive Committee. SASCO as an organization formed in 1991 was formed to resolve uh, contradictions that prevented students from uh, previously disadvantaged backgrounds from accessing institutions of higher learning. SASCO exists currently in about 26 universities and we are also well represented in 54 colleges throughout the country. We are speaking on a, about an affiliated membership of about 1.5 million and an associate membership that we've built over the years in terms of our convocation that is representing the aspirations and the interest of SASCO out there in the world. This is a platform that we usually utilize to provide space to allied organizations, to fraternal organizations, to come and talk to us. Tell us, what are your views about these elections uh, that uh, we are going through right now? Now, currently, as I greet you, uh, Comrade Nopala, currently we've been going through the registration processes in universities. Tell me, what has been happening there? What are your observations? What challenges are remaining that we still are seeing right now? And what is uh, SASCO's intervention in those regards? Challenges that relate to registration, which serve as huge obstacles for the past years, even today, are, are systemic. In what sense? Uh, if you still have institutions that govern themselves uh, outside uh, the prescripts and the mandate of a progressive government, especially the one that is led by the ANC, you will have uh, caps. Uh, for instance, an institution can decide. This year, we, we will only open up to a thousand number of students that must be enrolled as, uh, 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 to pursue an academic program in teaching, to pursue an academic program in engineering, to pursue an academic program in any other specific field. But there will be a disjuncture when it comes to that with the development and interests of the government because at one particular year, the government would be interested to have many engineers. You see? Yeah. So at, w when they have the input in three years prior to the produce that they would want to have, they will not be able to get that because institutions have been running themselves outside aligning themselves with the general and the general developmental agenda of the country. So that's problem number one. The problem number two is that over time institutions, their management have grown horrible and horrible and horrible arrogant. They have, uh, you know, reduced institutions to some mini bandu stands where there's no engagement whatsoever, formal or informal, with the majority stakeholders, which is students. Because when you have a progressive students' organizations like SASCO and institutions of higher learning, they would want to chant, uh, you know, the trajectory of transformation in that particular institution. So it is wise then to have a constant engagement. Now, with a student leadership. It is wise to have a constant engagement with workers. It is wise to have a constant engagement with all stakeholders in an institution of higher learning. It is wise to have a, a conversation with convocation, external stakeholders, and all of that, so that there's a progressive path towards a transforming that institution in particular and transforming the society in general. So registration now becomes the key access area. Now, this is where we, we, we base our battle with these institutions because they are running a, par a, a program that is uh, towards a different direction than what we envisage. Mm. But now, briefly before we go into the broader issues of the day today, I just want us to nudge this discussion, to give context about what is happening in institutions of higher learning. Taking from your previous point, one of those longest discussions uh, and during discussions that we have always had in the space of higher education has always been about the autonomy 
of institutions of higher learning. You've got university councils. The last time I checked, you would have about five representatives of the minister, for instance. Now, these university councils, and in, in, in terms of autonomy, how far their autonomy vis-a-vis -vis the developmental needs of society at that particular time. How far are we with the discussion that SASCO I know has been so invested in ever since myself uh, I was a student? How far are we with that discussion? One of the uh, allegations I want to place out there is that the, the ANC is growing to be a victim of its own successes. Mm. In its interest to resolve the three principal contradictions and the major one that there's exclusion, there was an exclusion and there's continued exclusion of uh, uh, the black majority from participating in the political and economic affairs of this country. The NC has achieved a lot if you look at the number of black professionals in the academia, mm. if you look at that. However, uh, what we've not paid attention to as a movement uh, is how progressive are these black uh, uh, academics. And these black academics, by the way, in their majority right now, are presiding over these institutions. Mm -hmm. And they are condi continuously perpetuating this autonomy. And this autonomy is regressive. Uh, when you want to depoliticize institutions, you know, the very bedrock to generate ideas, mm -hmm. yeah? the, 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 the very cornerstone of how do we get a learned experience of how a society is supposed to be shaped, where uh, uh, there's exactly a contestation of ideas. Mm -hmm. When you choose now to extremely depoliticize it, yeah? it does not yield into a positive effect that would be of interest to us as progressives. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Institutional autonomy me is our nightmare and we must end it mm. one way to end it we have to amend the higher education act yeah. because if you speak about these uh, ministerial appointees you know we, 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 we proposed last year to the african national congress and the alliance that there's a necessity of having to establish an accounting forum so that we, 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 we begin with the ministerial appointees and we go and vet exactly who are these professionals, yeah? mm. these academics, who seemingly are extremely and increasingly becoming liberal, mm. you know, mm. that are presiding over these institutions. So that we go and look and assess all of that. We provide an accounting platform so that we are able to balance what is it that we, we, we seek to achieve yeah? as a revolutionary movement with what is it exactly that is being taught and what is exactly that is being, because teaching here is in twofold in the mm. context of institution. It's exactly the content that is there and it's a culture Absolutely. that is there, the That's political culture. If there's depoliticization, it means now we have no space where we can generate mm. the massive support, the necessary gravitas mm. for the progressive movement that is in power to be able to discharge its duties without the, unnecessity, the unnecessities of it being protested mm. and, the, and the unnecessary demonstrations that sometimes are being uh, uh, utilized by demagogues. Mm. Let me take us uh, to our next point. Tell me about the importance, uh, delve deeper into it, zoom in, the importance of the Worker-Student Alliance. We know that in institutions of higher learning, there are alliances, progressive alliances that have been formed. For the purposes, by the way, necessity, necessitated by the conditions, the very conditions that we want to transform. How important is the Worker Student Alliance, and 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 is it is it is it assisting us to advance those trans that transformative agenda that we want to drive as a mass democratic movement? Would you say? I think the more relevant question is. Do we still have uh, a, a, a progressive and do we still have a, a positive and we still have healthy student worker alliance relations? Mm. And I'll tell you it's no, for three main reasons. One, what is taking place in institutions of higher learning is that both students and workers, there's buttering that is taking place with management. And uh, that thing uh, stagnates progress, you know. That buttering means uh, you can occupy a position né, to lead uh, 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 workers or you can occupy a position to lead students only to find out that uh, you can trade, uh, trade 
for, for in terms of the students' interests uh, or the workers' interests in exchange for a management or managerial position. Mm. That is what is taking place, and it's deeply affecting now that particular relationship because at one moment it will be a worker who's offered the managerial post, and they have to abandon. And, and, and sometimes they will be used and utilized by these academics who are presiding over these institutions mm. to mom students, yeah? to, to try and silence students once they're occupying that particular managerial role. So that buttering that is taking place equally with student leaders. Some student leaders, they go there and negotiate. Huh? They start negotiating that what becomes now my exit point mm. in, in the context mm. of being featured in the university structures of, of, of employment, you see. So that relationship uh, uh, gets now to be affected because of now those personal driven careerist interests. Mm. The second point is that when you look at uh, the relationship between students and workers, it not only has to be confined within the walls or the parameters of the institution per se. For instance, uh, workers have a duty to uphold performance standards. They have, they have that duty. Mm -hmm. Now, we are protesting as students. We have to go and take out workers eh, because we need to bring the institution to a standstill. Mm -hmm. And some they resist because the employer is saying, go to work. Mm -hmm. eh? They resist, we chase them by the gate and all, mm -hmm. and all of that. So now you can say that there's a slight discord between now that moment, between the interests of students and that of workers, which naturally should not have been the case because w the students they themselves are offspring of workers, you mm -hmm. see. You, you would notice it with police force that would be deployed. Eh? They will be shooting like they are dealing with criminals. You see? Mm. That, that, so, so, so now, they are executing their own job, you know, if you look at it at, at, at that angle. Now, so, so having to uphold the performance standards of workers whilst it does not coincide with the volatility, volatility of the students' interests is what brings a problem mm. and, 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 and now affects uh, 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 badly the relationship between workers yes, and yes, students. Yes. But the last point, which I think now this one covers it all, because all of these things, they tumble down to this particular point, that there is no particularly shared uh, and coherent political strategy né, between workers and students on how to transform these institutions of learning ah. in particular and a society in general. If as an education alliance, né, we could formulate né, a proper strategy, how do you deal with this kind of strategy? Because that's what a strategy is about. Mm. Strategy ought to be accompanied by tactics thereof. You see that, where do we want to arrive? What's our objective? Our objective is society. Mm. Uh, 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 now, what, how do we arrive there? You know, so that our ideas stand the test of time. And they don't die. Now, mm. we are almost like singing a chorus. It's almost like a, a ritualistic for us to keep saying, there's a necessity for a student worker alliance. There's a, why there's a necessity when leadership is there to provide it? Mm. So concretely, there needs to be a, a shared political strategy mm. to how to navigate, mm. you see, between mm. these uh, uh, two components, the workers and students. Mm. Because it is sometimes feels like uncharted waters. Yes. Now let's go into other contemporary issues of the day. There is a narrative out there, <clears throat> a, a narrative somehow misplaced, one would suggest in my, in, my, in my humble view, a narrative that says the ANC government is doing what we expect any government to do. However, me and you can sit here and agree, and I would want to expand on that, me and you can sit here and agree, that since 1994, we have had incremental progress in the space of higher education, be it uh, access, be it NSFAS, yes, you might be having administrative issues and others. Now, the president in the State of the Nation address spoke about a tinsualo, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the tinsualo that is a product of freedom, a tinsualo that has seen the ANC government in action in particular. Do you think that it would be a fair suggestion by some analysts, by some political pundits, uh, for instance, to suggest that, look, in 30 years, the ANC surely by now should have had enough time to reverse the damage that had been caused in over 372 years 
of oppressive laws and legal and legal frameworks. What would be the attitude of Sato? Is of Sasco? Is thirty years uh, really practical? Is it pragmatic? Is it enough? Have we made progress in particular on access? on access for the poor working class child to their universities, to the institutions of higher learning, to the TVET colleges, etc. What would be the attitude of such? One thing we cannot deny is that there's still a colonial legacy in our institutions of higher learning. But one thing we cannot deny as well is that there's an amount of progress. There's, there's as you put it, actually, is a, there's been an exponential progress that the ANC has achieved a lot. If you speak about um, uh, accessing institutions of high learning, there's been a massive expansion. Look at how uh, the technical and vocational institutions have been restructured to ensure that there's, 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 an, there's high access. And look at how, uh, actually, the government of the African National Congress has made it, you know, an, an, a, an interest, a key interest of the government that the, the employment creation is targeted on the artisans that would be produced from the technical and vocational institutions. You look at that. The accusation here, that is the allegation I want to level up, is that the ANC, to the eyes of the unlearned, it is increasingly becoming a victim of its own successes. You can have a massive pool of, you know, previously uh, disadvantaged students accessing institutions at that rate and mm. at that each and every year with increasing numbers. Mm. And then you can declare that the ANC has done nothing for all of these years. Ne? It would be an outright lie, an outright lie. But which me and you are here to demystify the lie, you see? Look at uh, <clears throat> the funding models that have been introduced in South Africa since 1953 with the Holloway formula, for instance. Th this is where South Africa now, actually, the world was, was shifting towards understanding that there's a necessity on increasing in the It would be a lie. However, I need to add, we, we, we may f have faltered ourselves as, as, a, as a movement on this specific area. We never took time to look at the question of the curriculum content, which I think now it should be a battle that we seriously focus on. No? Because let's make an example, both in basic and higher education. Let me begin with basic education. If a progressive government like the ANC is able to provide free basic education, mm. scholar transport, nutrition, stationary learning material, no? at the end, somewhere at, uh, at, um, at, uh, in grade 12, the product is an outright liberal. So what was this massive investment for if there was no proper curriculum content ne, that, that will divorce uh, you know, the colonial interest culture tendencies? Ne? Why was that investment in the first place? Ne? Mm -hmm. So that's why now we miss it. That's why now you would get now a grade 12 whose analysis is liberal to the extent that they can rubbish off the ANC. Though they forget that they are coming from this, uh, uh, you know, improved situation mm -hmm. of having been offered all of these services by the African National Congress government. Go to higher education. 
most of the students there who are now receiving allowances so that they can access gadgets for that matter as a result of digital migration, they go to social media platforms. They are able to declare there that even if the ANC were to lose power, we still have NSFAS. That is fallacious. Mm. Yeah? Because it means we never took time and assessed what is it that is to be taught. Is it, is, is it in line with what we want to achieve? Mm. Yeah? in terms of our developmental interests. Is it in line? Because you can't have a student eh, who, who's been receiving allowances eh, through mm. NSFAS, who's been accommodated through NSFAS allowances, whose tuition has been paid by them, who's writing whatever that he or she is writing through excess f uh, 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 allowances by NSFAS, eh, mm. and write a damaging statement that even if the ANC, now, that alone tells you that we've not been able to educate. Né? We've not been able to educate these young academics about our revolutionary interests. Mm. To the extent that they can declare that a DA, DA that is so much interested in decreased public and social spending, that a DA can still sustain NSFAS. DA believes that education uh, is a commodity. Mm. Yeah. Students don't know that. The, 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 the A believes education is a commodity. All of these other organizations, your action essay, these liberal, they believe that. Now, you can't declare that even post, because there's an ideological inclination eh, that underscores the fact that how is the ANC supposed to govern? Of course, with its allied forces, you see? Mm. So now, that is what is much important for us to understand so that when we go forward, we know very well that we've not done the most important aspect. Mm. Né? That is, we are providing education, and we know that education is a cornerstone to this country's development, to any nation's development. But what we've not done is, what is it that we are teaching our people? Mm. That's why we mm. fail it. That's not why we have people who can just say, 30 years, there's been nothing. Mm. Mm. With the ability of that person having to say that publicly, exactly. that public capa capacity and capability to say that is a product of the African National it Congress. Is. Is. That freedom of speech to say that is a product of the African National it Congress, is. you see? So the, the, the African National Congress has done so much. There's so much political participation in the discourse of how do we drive the agenda of transforming this country from all corners. But now we need to inform it. We don't have to be reactive. Mm. And we don't have to adapt to times when it's even it's not in our favor. We need to stick to our core roots. What is it that we wanted to transform exactly? Mm -hmm. So, so you, you are talking about a contested space curriculum development, you know, how uh, the kind of content that we expose learners and uh, students to. Uh, one argues and says that, uh, I mean, it's a fact, no, Pala, you would know, education is not necessarily ideologically neutral. Mm. It's not. It is used yeah. as the tool by the ruling class uh, over the other, one way or the other, to control uh, that particular Absolutely. Country. Absolutely. So that, is, that is the reality that we are facing. Mm -hmm. But now, what are some of the key interventions, the key interventions that the ANC government would have come up with in as far as higher education is concerned. What I'm trying to get you at uh, here, Nopala, is that one of the reports that always come often and consistent from the IEC is voter participation, especially of the youth vote, the younger voters. When we've seen an improvement reportedly right now, uh, when in the case whereby younger people are registering to vote, but there are still those who are saying, but you vote, you vote for what? Uh, what, will it, what will it change? I am not interested in politics, but fact is politics are interested in you. What is the call of SASCO? Uh, how do you mobilize those young people who are still reluctant to exercise this particular right, to use it, and to appreciate that uh, blood and sweat was spilled for them to have this particular right. I mean, I, I like the, 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 the storyline that you are giving, that there is someone who will go on Twitter, let's call it, they call it X now, there is someone who will go on Facebook and complain about everything about the agency government. That person is coming from an RDP house, is go, went to a non-fee uh, paying school, uh, got NSFAS when they got uh, to, to tertiary level, 
uh, they've got 350 social grants for those who are not uh, 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 having any any, any any means of production. They've got other social grants. They've got access to health. They've got freedom of speech. They've got the freedom uh, to write. How do you mobilize young people, they, 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 the youth vote, to say on the 29th of May, what is your message to them? Wake up, go there, make your voice heard, but make it heard correctly. Yes. Our game plan has forever, and we cannot change it. It's about conscientizing. Now, conscientizing has two facets. One, we need to conscientize a young person in institutions of higher learning that you need to exercise that right of having to vote. But we also need to conscientize them on how to vote, you see? In the context of that, you wouldn't want to conscientize someone to vote and then thereby voting, they vote a progressive party out of power. Mm. It, it would not be, uh, when you know very well, when you know very well that, in actual fact, as a limitation of this person's understanding in terms of what they have, as an absence of or minimal education about the voting aspect, that is, which political choice do I have here, as those limitations, they then make a regressive decision, you know? So now, our, our game plan is to conscientize them that these are the reasons why you need to vote. The, the SASCO has made it clear uh, in its national policy conference that we're declaring our support to the African National Congress. Not because they are not shortfalls. There are, are many, which is why we criticize it when we have to. Yeah. Which is why we're now standing right now complimenting it so that people are enlightened that there are many good things that the ANC has done. We might be speaking in a more positive language about the ANC because we are confronted by elections, yes. In a space where everyone who speaks about the ANC is almost negative, we need to shine the light. Mm -hmm. you know? We need to shed the light that here's what the ANC has done over these years. No? So, We've been recruiting the students, we've been, especially the first year students who are coming from institution, from um, a basic education. So now, we've been making them understand why is it necessary to vote and why is it necessary to vote the African National Congress. Mm. And we dare not lie to them that we are not going to meet shortfalls once the ANC has been given confidence to run this country again. There will always be shortfalls mm. because we are in a political economic war. So we can't be void of that analysis on the one hand that there are those who will be willing and wishing and wanting to derail the progress of the progressive government. Mm. You see? Mm. So now, how do we deal with that? So we start now with our political education programs to arm then our members, the students in general as well, that here Here's how you deal with this situation. Have we succeeded thus far? I think so. If you look at uh, how we are faring well in, the, in this cycle of Tibet elections, it means during our Right to Learn campaign, the beginning of our Right to Learn campaign, we've done so much so in, in, in the conscientizing business né, of, of students. So now, that is what is most important, that for any ally to the African National Congress, they criticize it when it's extremely necessary. They criticize it because this ANC is a legacy of the black majority in South Africa. This is the only the asset mm. they have. Mm. They have nothing, you see? Mm. Mm. Black people have nothing in South Africa. The, the, the dispossessed, yeah? mm. the disenfranchised, the, the marginalized, they have nothing but the African National Congress as their asset, as their political vehicle, mm. you know, to chant, you know, their interests and to voice their pain. Mm. This is where we stand. The African National Congress needs to win elections. When you speak about the legacy, mm -hmm. You, 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 you argue very eloquently the legacy of the ANC is being, is being, is being, is being contested by those who are within. What is the attitude uh, of SASCO there before we go to our last question? There's nothing ideological that is being pursued by this uh, rebellion group called the MK. Mm. Nothing whatsoever. It's a mixture of some uh, slight tribal chauvinism coupled with Takar. Yeah. That's what you see there. For instance, uh, one of the demagoguery, you know, um, uh, portrayals of that. I, I, I just yesterday saw the constitution, the cover of the constitution of the MK Youth League. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the background of the cover is its leader, uh, education. 
you know mm. as its leader and i i get to worry would would then a constitution have a, a face or you know a, a I've represent never heard of that I'm, I'm, yes I've never heard because of the constitution ne? Mm. Constitution presides all above Absolutely. all affairs of the organization. Absolutely. It is one object of an organization that lives to be inhumane. Mm. The, how we utilize the constitution of any organization, it then gives operations so that we can be able to achieve our ends. Now, when a constitution is a face of its leader, I mean, that's one level of cultism that maybe, <laughs> we, we, it, that's just unprecedented, you see? So, cultism, which is it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, in an inherent product né, of corruption. Mm. Yeah, because mm. you would want to surround yourself with people who are not going to question you as a leader. It means you are up to no good. That's what you want to do something and you don't want to be asked and you don't want to be questioned. You want to do all illicit things unchecked. And you don't want to account. You don't want to account. That's mm. why you create now a cult like a persona so that you can lead an organization that will, 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 will be supported by people whom you are not even prepared to educate. What is it that they are following? Mm, mm. You know, um, uh, the MK, uh, 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 MK bad, so to say, because I, sh I should not be misconstrued yeah. to speak about our very our, own mm. MK, the armed struggle uh, veterans of, 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 of our movement. Now, the language that they use is so much to uh, create an impression that this is a party only for a particular ethnicity in South Africa, mm. you know? It's subtle how, how, how they generate it, but you look at the, 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 how the support is being generated for MK, the target groups and all of that, you know? So you can see now that there's sort of a fostering of a negative, you know? a negative with an interest, by the way, with an interest you know, to cause division in the society. Mm. Why there's no ideological uh, um, imprint in the, in the MK, as they call it, is that you would not be in the process of nation building whilst you want to disrupt social cohesion. Absolutely. Yeah? You would not when we are approaching a vital pre period where everyone have to exercise their right in terms of choosing their own government and you threaten violence. Mm. Yeah? Mm. There's nothing ideological about that. That's chauvinism. Mm. You see? You want to put your point across in a democratic dispensation where if you are not heard or your point you think is correct and no one is receiving it, the correctness and the validity that you seem to have, you then put it across in a chauvinistic and in a way that is undemocratic. We cannot allow that, by the way. So that's why now as a South African Students Congress, we're very clear that uh, the president of the African National Congress, who's also the president of the country, needs to ensure that the security cluster is in place on time. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because we will not have, uh, you know, uh, all that time to be dealing with people who should be in mental institutions once the results come out. <laughs> yeah? When the results come out, we should have, you know, uh, uh, police vans coming close by <laughs> voting stations ne, to mm. deal with mad people. Yeah. There's no room for mad people in South Africa. Mm. No room for mad people in South Africa. Mm. This is freedom that has produced democracy and the democracy that we fought for. You see? Mm -hmm. So, MK is a democratic organization led through cult principles with certain tenets and values that are corrupt, by the way. Mm -hmm. You see now, you have the right to vote, but here's how you vote. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. Don't vote for a person. Yeah? Vote for a program. Absolutely. You see? Vote for a program. Absolutely. Then the program is the realization of the Freedom Charter. Mm, yeah? mm. The president just announced right now that there's a, a state bank. Huh? Mm. We've been fighting for that. Mm. Huh? The president. The president has taken a colossal posture when it comes to uh, 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 the Israel and Palestinian uh, matter. Yeah? Going to ICJ. Yeah? It, South Africa right now as a result of the progress of the African National Congress government is becoming now a beacon of hope. Mm. For all Democrats out there mm. in the world, mm. Eh? Mm. it's it's shining mm. Eh? Mm. through the African National Congress because these are policy propositions of the African National Absolutely. Congress. Absolutely. You see? So that's what you must vote for. This is why when you are approaching 
a voter, you need to tell them. ANC stands for absolute freedom. Mm, mm. That's what it stands for. Mm, mm. We are not only freeing people in South Africa. We, mm. We've shown it, we've demonstrated it we've that demonstrated. We, are, we, we are in a process and we are in a struggle and in a fight to liberate all the oppressed peoples out there. Mm. So when you vote for the ANC, you're you are, you are, you are voting for a shining star. Yeah. You know? You know that you are placing your hopes in a, in a program, because it's a program. Yeah, it's a you are pro placing your hopes in a program that has no interest of failing you. Yeah. My last question to you. Here are the elections. Here is the 29th of May. It has been declared, proclaimed. It is coming. It is fast approaching. We are eight weeks from now to that particular point. What is your message to students your constituency in particular, but society in general, about not only voting, but voting correctly, and why? What is Sasko saying? Yes. With everyone out there, there's a necessity. There's a necessity to give the African National Congress another chance. Mm. There's a necessity for everyone to perpetually give the African National Congress continued confidence to run this country, no? because we have seen the great strides. We have seen everything that has been there. ANC's program is consistent. Mm. We are deriving everything and we are dealing with everything in the pursuit to economically liberate the people in South Africa guided by the, the, the Freedom Charter. So mm. when you go and place your ex and you go and vote come the 29th, you are voting for the Freedom Charter. You are voting for your own economic and political liberation in South Africa. Mm. That's what it means. Mm. Mm. So th that's the message that we are giving to everyone out there. And we, we are saying they must vote for an organization that will ensure that when they are not happy about it, they must voice their concerns. Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. They must voice their concerns. It's the only party, you know, where you are able, because we do not have a disease of cultism here. Mm. Part of the ANC's renewal program, they said we want to end this cancer of having members that are, are members of members, mm. you know. We want to end that cancer. Now, you can see an organization that is on a path, on a positive path, ne, to shift the terrain towards instilling the values of democracy. Mm. Now, everyone must participate democratically. So it is that that you want, that when you are displeased about its services, you are able to voice your concerns and say, we are not happy about what you are doing. Let's have a discourse. Why is this happening? Mm. And then if there are no explanations, if there are no explanations, you still, the ANC still offer, offers you the right that in the next cycle of elections, you vote it out. Absolutely. You see? So, when you are voting this machinery called the African National Congress, you are voting for your own self-realization. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. That's what we are doing. Mm. No, but I think you have said a mouthful. Yes. I did warn you when the show started, this particular episode, that it will be indeed an engaging one. Uh, it has been full of energy. The message is very, very clear from the South African Students' Congress that vote, but not only vote, that is your right, vote and vote for the African National Congress. I was today with the Secretary General of SASCO, Comrade Alungile Kamche. It has been an absolutely engaging conversation. Thank you for making the time uh, to come, by the way, uh, Nopala. Let us go to the streets. Let us work. This ANC, Yabuya. Ah, yeah, Thank you definitely, much. definitely, Brax. This has been Satu's <laughs> Arbuli Fridays. Another episode, another exciting episode. We'll see you again next week.